Where does creativity fit into compliance? In more places than you think. Problem solving, accountability, communication, and connection, they all take creativity. Join your hosts, Tom Fox and Ronnie Feldman on Creativity and Compliance, part of the Compliance Podcast Network. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Tom Fox together with Ronnie Feldman. Ronnie, hello. Hello there. Good to see everybody again via audio. Uh, And we are back for another episode of Creativity and Compliance. And today we have a uber special guest, Angelique Lee Rowley, the CECO, C-E-C-O of GW Pharmaceuticals, is going to share a bit with us about the creative program programming that the company has rolled out over the past year. Angelique, first of all, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to visit with us today and welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here with you. Thanks for having me. I was wondering if you could uh, uh, tell us a little bit about your journey to the SECO chair and uh, what brought you to GW Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, thanks. I had a bit of a roundabout way into compliance, as I think a lot of us have. Um, I started actually in R&D at a medical device company um, and um, somehow ended up uh, going to law school at night. And um, actually, while I was in mergers and acquisitions class, we were acquired by Siemens AG, um, by their healthcare division, and ended up getting kind of sucked into compliance um, through their big bribery and corruption scandal. And uh, we had um, had a bit of experience in compliance because we had had an FCPA uh, violation at my prior company that we um, ended up with a, a deferred prosecution agreement. And I was one of the few people with some experience with the government. So um, was able to help be part of that um, strategy and then ended up leading um, a team in my little division um, and had a a 40-person team that we rolled out um, the new strategy across the globe for the diagnostics division um, of Siemens. And so that was my entry into into compliance. Um, And it was a just phenomenal opportunity to see um, just kind of the greatest minds in compliance um, working out what to do. And got a lot of different perspectives. And after doing that for about five years, um, decided I got some of the thoughts of my own of how I'd like to try to do it in ways that Siemens just couldn't in a company that big and and global. And had an opportunity at a small um, pharma pharmaceutical company, and was able to start my own legal and compliance department there and start a principles based um, compliance uh, program. And did that for another five years and uh, got to experiment a little there. And then the opportunity at GW came up and really couldn't pass up um, the opportunity. It's a very unique company. And we actually brought the first uh, cannabis-based medicines through a traditional um, regulatory pathway in, into prescription medicines, starting first in the, in the UK and Europe and um, other countries outside the United States. And then just last year launched the first FDA-approved um, cannabidiol or cannabis-based uh, medicine here in the U.S. And I thought, well, if a company is willing to to work with that kind of product in, in the right way and, and do it the hard way, um, then how much uh, easier and, and fun would it be to work with them on doing business the right way and the ethical way? Um, and the... Uh, the leadership here is very committed to doing business with integrity and um, you know, really being seen as a respected member of the pharmaceutical industry. Um, so it's, um, it's, a really, it's really a privilege to work with them in developing an integrity and principles-based uh, compliance program as well. Um, so it's, it's been, it's been a, a very interesting experience here. And then that's what brought me to Ronnie as I was looking for um, you know, interesting and creative ways to enhance that program. So, uh, um, Angelique is, uh, full disclosure to the listening audience, um, Angelique is one of my uh, favorite people because of her um, willingness to try new things to uh, break through and engage employees and not just uh, just to do the traditional things. So, um, um, we worked on a project together this past year, and um, I, the, the project was uh, where she was served as a subject matter expert and helped us kind of find the right blend between entertainment and learning. But the, the, to tell you a little bit about the project, just set context, um, 
we uh, had the the idea of using uh, if for those who are familiar with John Oliver's Last Week Tonight Show on HBO, um, we had the idea of using that model of a comedy late night comedy variety show as a way to teach compliance issues. So we were borrowing, you know, last week tonight as a format, uh, Seth Meyers and Stephen Colbert as a format, um, SNL weekend update as a format. And we're like, okay, let's not talk about social and political satire, but let's use this format that everybody, that many people appreciate and use it to talk about explaining corporate risk in a way. And, and that ended up becoming, a a product we call Workplace Tonight. So with that as a backdrop, um, you know, it was a, a, a little bit of a, I would say, a unique idea, but there's a lot of people who are, who sometimes are hesitant about using entertainment and learning, blending entertainment with the learning in a, in a way that uses humor, entertainment, music. I'm wondering what drew you specifically to the project. Yeah, well, I have to say, I had a little bit of um, of trouble selling it to um, to some of the executives, and and until I asked them to go ask how go ask people how many of them really consumed their news through these type of programs <laughs> instead of traditional news outlets, because um, I know a lot of people who do, and and if you know people are consuming their actual news through that, then maybe we could get them to consume the training content through that too, um, and I know personally. You know, I could go on for days about how many studies and surveys have been done on adult learning techniques and how humor can, um, you know, actually helps improve memory retention and learning. But really, it came down to, you know, nobody likes boring and compliance trainings are traditionally thought of as boring. And so if you can kind of shake things up and make it interesting, then, um, I'm all in, and it only helps gain credibility for the compliance group as a whole. Well, so uh, let's talk about that just for a little bit more, because uh, one of the reasons that um, Tom and I started this podcast is to empower uh, uh, people to think about different ways to approach um, really mitigating risk, but specifically through engaging employees around these these subjects. So we're using this project as kind of a, a launching point to talk about more broadly about uh, how different kinds of creative projects can work. So, what is that? How you sold it into your to your company? You you talked about um, uh, you know the formats of how people consume information. Did you show them some studies, or was it more anecdotal? I'm, I'm just curious how you. Yeah, how you did I, yeah, that. I used a combination. Yeah, I, I I did ask them to to go really talk to to employees, to their friends and family about those types of shows and, and how people are consuming their, their news. Um, I, I did bring out some legitimate studies um, and, and talk about some of those metrics and, and adult learning techniques. Um, I brought our sales trainer over and had, had him help explain to me um, how he thought it would um, be helpful, at least on the sales training side. And, um, and I just asked them to trust me, you know, <laughs> as well. And, and it, I think be me being part of that and being the subject matter expert, um, you know, they were concerned that, you know, if there ever were to be any type of government investigation that they wouldn't kind of get credit for it, there really being an effective training program if it were, you know, maybe not being taken seriously. Um, but I know there's, you know, the content's going to be there, um, and I'm personally going to make sure it's going to be there and, you know, that it right. will, it'll be serious and, and it is a blend. It's not just funny, um, but the humor is, is mixed in and it's very relevant, appropriate content there. It's just, um, you know, the humor is actually done in a way, you know, the, it can't be irrelevant humor. It has to actually be done in a way that helps, um, uh, make the point, right, of the, of, of the content. Yeah, I I love the way you say that because uh, so you know I got my start in improv comedy at the at the Second City and we always talked about um, humor in service of a message. Uh, that's right. what you know c commercials on television you know that are often humorous don't make fun of their product. <laughs> you know they use an entertaining situation to augment qualities about a product. And so um, you know at least when I'm approaching a project, we try and think of it that way. Like you you might try lots of different particularly in humor, you might try lots of different approaches, but you're really looking for the one that, um, 
that that doesn't certainly doesn't demean or offend, but uh, celebrate some quality <laughs> of some sort. Um, and in this case, these ver- late night variety shows tend to use a lot of metaphor, which is they explain something that's maybe dry or boring, and they go, "If you were going to do this, that would be like doing this." <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so I wanted to ask you uh, um, specifically since this particular project we work wa- worked on was about what did have humor and comedy as a part of it. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about this, like you can't please everybody about it. What's been your experience with how it was received with your, uh, both the U S and global audience? Yeah, it's, you know, in ge- like overall, it was amazingly well received, um, you know, across the board, hundred percent well, well received. If that doesn't mean every joke hit hundred percent with every individual, right? That's never going right. to be the case with, with anyone. Right. Yeah. But you know, and even if I think the exact humor joke doesn't resonate with each individual, everyone does really appreciate that it's entertaining and it's not boring. And they appreciate the effort that went into creating something that is entertaining and not boring. And just that effect of um, you know, of them understanding that you went through that effort is helpful in building a better relationship between the compliance department and the business and opens lines of communication that weren't there, makes the compliance department feel more approachable um, and just overall, um, you know, is better for the brand, the compliance brand in within the organization and just has a, you know, just a great effect overall. I love that. Like, I think it's an important discussion to have, um, you know, with, with any kind of creative project, again, whether it's humorous or not, is what are we trying to accomplish here? The, the, the end result isn't funny. The end result is about empathy and uh, approachability. Um, and then you said something um, in a previous conversation uh, uh, about, like, the majority of uh, – Sorry, let me say it a different way. A common thing that ethics and compliance uh, programs do is, uh, I think, a default is often a scare tactic. Yes. Um, and I yes, wanted to hear your, right. your, maybe you could elaborate on your perspective. Yeah. And I think, yeah, that was kind of the original approach to compliance training, right? And let's go back to especially when I was back at Siemens. Um, and not just, not just there, I don't want to pick on them, but, you know, in you know, in general, when when compliance training was first starting out and, you know, if people are under a corporate integrity agreement or something, you know, the default is to go to scare tactics because you think that's going to make an impression on people or if you're correcting some really bad behaviors that exist. But that's only effective to a certain point. Of course, like nobody wants to go to jail. So you think you, that's where the place to start. And it gets people's attention. But you know, I think the main people, the main message people tend to walk away with is, you know, I don't look good in orange. And I think that then tends to translate to don't get caught. And then that can drive bad behavior underground rather than bring out the truly desired outcome of educating people and, you know, having it resonate that doing the right thing is good for business and helping the organization discover and correct bad behaviors. Um, so that really lends itself itself to more of where the compliance industry and is evolving to, which is this more principles based um, type of programs, and um, you know helping teach people how to think about doing the right thing and how to how to how to think of, through situations rather than just scolding and scaring. And yeah. so these types of creative trainings um, help get people thinking and thinking kind of turns compliance on its head, right? Make them think about it in a new way and you know, actually get them thinking about the topics instead of just um, wagging your finger at them. Right, or memorizing something that you... Yes, you're, like, you yeah, know. this is what the law says. Don't do it or you're going to go to jail. Right? Yeah, don't do it to jail. And then I've passed the test saying that I did that, um, but then I forgot about it two seconds later. Yeah, it doesn't really <laughs> help. Yeah, help you if a situation presents itself like, okay... I know I'm not supposed to bribe this person or I'm going to go to jail, but then, well, what can I do? What should I do? How do I interact with them? Ah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so uh, uh, you're getting a, a lot of my perspectives out to this uh, podcast. So uh, I guess full apology for that. But um, w- one of the things that I'm a big proponent of is that really, you know, uh, creativity is a, 
a way to influence the culture. Uh, and one of the things, if you want to talk about ethics, compliance, integrity, speaking up, is you need to be in the atmosphere on a more regular basis, whereas training can be, in, you know, you might want that to be more infrequent um, or, you know, uh, um, uh, what I'm, I guess I'm trying to say is you want to have these topics more ever present in the atmosphere as part of the culture so that you're constantly uh, in their thoughts and minds. Um, and mm -hmm. one of the, the re ways to do that is to be entertaining. So uh, with that as a, a backdrop, what are some of the ways that you have um, either through this project or other ways tried to um, roll out this kind of programming? Like how are you, how are you getting it out to people? Yeah. Um, so we piloted this particular um, set of e-learnings videos with our U.S. sales group um, just to kind of see if they probably figured they'd be the most receptive. So let's start with them. And we kind of sprinkled it in between their assignments, their kind of two weeks of um, home learning before they had their in-person live initial sales trainings. Um, and then um, I did a live training with them as part of that that live training. And when, um, when they all came together for that live training, they were all spontaneously talking about the compliance trainings videos, which not used to. Um, and then when I, you know, walked up to do my live training, they weren't scared of me, right? They were talking to me ahead of time. Um, they go, like, oh, did you, you're the one who gave us those compliance training videos. Those were hysterical. And you know, when I came to the part of my live training talking about you know, interactions with healthcare professionals, there are about four people who stood up. And okay, for those of you who haven't seen these videos, one of the um, there's a little joke about giving physicians kickbacks, and this lady does a little jig, doing dance, a little dance with kickbacks and a little kicking her, her foot back. And then people stood up and started doing little kicks and. You now it just made it kind of fun and approachable and everyone starts laughing. And now if people have a question about something that has to do with finances and they can, you know, take an HCP somewhere or do a dinner, people will literally start kick, doing little kicks in the hallway uh, uh -huh. when they ask. And you know, so it just kind of makes, uh, again, it makes the whole thing a little bit more approachable and interesting. Oh, that's 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 really great to hear. So you you gave them just from a, a tactical standpoint, you gave them um, like a homework. Go go watch this and then show up to a live training. That was the yeah, and it was kind of sprinkled in between their product learning and their disease state learning. Oh right. Yeah, and it was kind of like for them, they actually thought of it as almost like a break instead of a chore. Yeah, because it, it was entertaining for them. Yeah. Well, I like that. You know, like uh, in general, like um, there's a lot of uh, value in, in traditional uh, e-learning, particularly if it's interactive and, and fun. But one of the things that, you know, there are a lot of products out there that are not entertaining and fun. And I often recommend blending the two things. So uh, yeah. like a like a commercial break um, as, a, yeah. as a nice strategy, because then you get the best of both worlds and yeah. Sort of. Yes. Some of the other ways that, that we've used, um, you know, other kind of entertaining and creative products is at some, some live um, training events, we'll use um, some of the shorter um, videos as yeah, almost commercials or as people are going in and out of live general sessions um, to have them kind of playing yeah, as um, little interludes or, or commercials um, in between things. Mm -hmm. I dig that as an idea too. Just the whole idea of like, even if even if you're not on the agenda, if you have something that's short and interesting, you can um, have a presence at some of those those things. Because mm -hmm. uh, you know, get as they say, get ethics and compliance out of the ethics and compliance office. Yeah, get them anywhere. Yeah, we put them in. Yeah, in because um, we're you know global. We're in a lot of offices, so we'll have have them playing um, kind of before and after meetings sometimes as people are getting settled. Um, we'll have little kind of speak up or helpline reminders, um, like little commercial type things playing, yeah, just as people are getting settled in the meeting rooms. Um, you know, any, anywhere and everywhere we can, we can find, we'll have a little electronic billboards. And anywhere I can find a mode of communication, I'll stick something. Um, and, you know, the more eye catching or ear catching it is, um, then, you know, the more people actually kind of look and pay attention for a second. <laughs>
I never heard the term ear catching before, and I'm going to start using that. <laughs> well, so uh, I'm just looking at the time. We're always trying to be mindful of keeping these sort of short and sweet. Um, but, so what uh, I guess like if you had any advice to give other people who are, um, you know, they, they may need to uh, uh, convince or empower mm-hmm. uh convince uh, others, the powers that be to do something creative, or they may have a project in mind. What sort of advice or what have you learned through this project that you might be able to help other people? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Say be bold and, you know, don't, uh, don't be afraid to have a little bit of fun with compliance. And um, it doesn't mean that you don't take it seriously, um, that it's not a serious topic um, just because you're injecting a little bit of humor into it and, it, you know, making people think about it a different way isn't bad. And any way that you can get people to talk about compliance is good. And it's going to be good for compliance. It's going to be good for the culture. And it's going to be good for. Oh, I appreciate that. And I'll add uh, one of my uh, little fun talking points, uh, which is that w- one thing, a way to rephrase what you, you just said is there's a difference between having a difficult conversation and a conversation about a difficult thing. Um, which to me is a, a little nuance. What we're trying to do is have a uh, conversation about a difficult thing and using an entertaining rapper to do that. Um, and the other main point I guess I'll, I'll, I'll end with is I, I love the idea of like not being too precious about like we didn't know when we were working on this exactly how it was going to go. But we knew we, we were going to try and make it provocative and interesting. And we knew we wouldn't please everybody. But we also know we would live the fight another day that if uh, we – we try this and some people liked and some people didn't. Well, we can try something else later. And over time, you start engaging more people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I would just uh, say at the end of the day, nobody likes to be bored. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I, I'm going to use that as an awkward transition to ask you, Tom. Uh, <laughs> uh, did you have any other thoughts or questions to wrap up this, uh, this podcast? The uh – Wow, is uh, really how I want to end. Uh, there was a lot to um, uh, really unpack here, and uh, there's so much that you gave us, uh, Angelique, um, that I really uh, am going to uh, use uh, this going forward. So uh, from my end, I really just wanted to thank you for taking the time to visit with us because when we can have a compliance practitioner talk about her real-world experience of using some of these tools, strategies, and tactics and techniques to move compliance really uh, from from rote training to part of the conversation is just fantastic. So oh, uh, I wanted to thank you. To be- <laughs> yeah, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to uh, visit with us today. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. So this is Tom Fox on behalf of Ronnie Feldman. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for this episode, and I hope you'll join us again. Ronnie, you want to say goodbye to everyone? Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Creativity and Compliance. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to subscribe and leave a review. 